with the first pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Bryce Young, quarterback, Alabama. So Nick Saban, part of the Bryce Young contingent, celebrating the first ever, first overall selection out of the University of Alabama, hugging C.J. Stroud. We'll soon discuss how much longer C.J.'s night might be, but right now it's Bryce Young hugging Anthony Richardson. And he's the first player out of the green room and out of Union Station to head to the stage and to put on a Carolina Panther hat. And welcome to the National Football League, Bryce Young. Think about all the work over his life that went into this moment to get him right here. Been told he's too small his whole life. He goes to modern day, the premier high school program in the country dominates then goes to Alabama the premier college football program and dominates and here he is once again the first pick in the draft what an accomplishment and at no point did it ever seem too big for him he he played like he's getting to the stage with a slow heartbeat with patience this guy's in control all the time and don't forget was never afraid to humble himself played behind Mac Jones a first round pick and then took over immediately thereafter Daniel yeah, we can uh, jump into the video here and let's see what this man looks like on the field. We've heard everything about his character, everything about his work ethic. That's all off the charts. There's a lot to love about what you see as well. The guys have talked about him being a point guard in a way that Drew Brees distributed the football. That's why the comparison exists, not just because of their size. But I come down to the four Ps. Let's start with pocket awareness, his sixth sense to be able to feel pressure, climb, get away from it, and deliver the ball accurately down the field. The poise, you get free rushers, he hangs in there. He's not the biggest guy, but he's not afraid. He gets his cleats in the ground. He'll take that hit and deliver the football. Ball placement, poor Julius Brents, the corner from K-State. You can't cover it better than this. He's in perfect position. This ball is almost hand-delivered to the wide receiver. And then the playmaking. This offensive line was not quite what it's been in years past for Alabama. He had opportunities like this against LSU CD to make things happen, and he did. Absolutely, and you already mentioned Drew Brees as a cop. How about I pay, uh, pay homage to Doug Flutie? Because what we're seeing here from Bryce Young, its ability to move around, locate target, put ball on target. Doug Flutie was doing that coming out of Boston College, but we weren't ready to receive him yet because of his size in the NFL. Had to go to Canada and then come back. But you're seeing the same playmaking ability. Doug Flutie born too soon. Kurt Warner talked about the ability to play from the pocket, to play on schedule. We just saw that from Drew Brees. That's what you will get from Bryce Young. With the second pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select C.J. Stroud, quarterback, Ohio State. So they do take a quarterback, and they do take C.J. Stroud out of the Ohio State University. The Buckeye chosen second overall, and he is the first draft choice for D'Amico Ryans, the new head coach there. They do not go defender. They do not trade the pick. And we do start quarterback, quarterback here tonight in Kansas City. And I would truck Nick Tessario with the nuclear codes because no information got out of Houston. There was a lot swirling around, but there was a tight lid on what they were going to do. This, to me, we talked about it, guys, was logical. It made the most sense. They didn't have their quarterback of the future before this moment, and they have him now. They had to do this. I, I didn't I didn't want to believe all this smoke because, guys, you, can, you got to believe your eyes to some extent. And when you watch this guy play, like I have for the last two years, like I said earlier, I've covered eight of his games. He is surgical with the football. I mean, his ball placement, his anticipatory nature that he throws the ball with, he is has been one of the best quarterbacks in college football. And this is, I believe, the accurate pick. And you could see some of the room. He looks a little relieved, obviously elated and overjoyed. I mean, it's his draft stock that's been questioned significantly. It started with another Ohio State quarterback in Justin Fields, whether he was going to be still in Chicago or not.
but it's C.J. Stroud who now comes out, emerges as the second overall pick in this draft after all. And he is a pure thrower. You talk about pocket ability. He has that. Any questions you had about C.J. Stroud, though, they were answered in the game against Georgia in the playoffs. How about the pocket movement? Got a question whether or not he can move around, reset, deliver the ball. He shows you that ability on time in rhythm. The ball comes out of the same arm slot. He's a rhythm passer. And look at the ball placement where he's able to put it always on that upfield shoulder so you can run after the catch. Jalen Carter unblocked right in your face here. How do you get away from him? He does eyes up, deliver the ball down the football field. All these athleticism questions. He put them all to bed making things happen outside the structure of the play. And he might not be going for 40, 50 yards. He's going to get you first downs with his athleticism. Melissa? Well, he is fired up. And you told me you've been dreaming about this day since you were five years old. What is it like to be the number two overall pick in the draft? Yeah, first and foremost, you ought to always give my Lord, my, my Lord and Savior all the credit. Jesus Christ, man. Without him, I wouldn't be here. It's the reason I'm here. You're getting emotional. Yes, ma'am. This took a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work, and you're going to a team that's looking for a new identity. Got a new head coach looking for a leader. What do you bring? I bring me. I bring a man of God. I bring a leader. I bring somebody who's going to go to work every day and, and, and work their tail off. Somebody who comes from a winning tradition. Somebody who wants to win. And that's all I care about, man. So I'm going to be the best teammate, the best leader, the best quarterback I can be. Fans love hearing that. Go celebrate. Thank you. Guys, there was a lot of talk about this S2 test and processing and, and does he make good decisions? Well, I can tell you that he does and he makes great decisions with things like trajectory. You see that hole in the Rose Bowl finds Jackson Smith and Jigba, but it's also anticipating windows and when he's throwing the football, he anticipates that mid-tier longer throw as well as anybody that I've seen over college football the last couple of years and the accuracy down the field is extraordinary. This is why defensive coordinators, when I would talk to them before covering Ohio State, the opponent defensive coordinator CD they would say this guy is surgical the Arizona Cardinals have traded the third pick to the Houston Texans with the third pick in the 2023 NFL draft the Houston Texans select Will Anderson Jr. linebacker Alabama so Again, it starts quarterback, quarterback, linebacker. It starts Alabama, Ohio State, Alabama. And it starts Carolina, Houston, Houston. This is one of the most remarkable beginnings of an NFL draft we can remember and what we would have expected out of the most unpredictable draft coming in. And we're coming off of a year. We had Sauce Gardner on the pregame. Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson were offensive and defensive rookies of the year. Two top 10 picks who have given your Jets a lot of hope. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers adds to that. Their candidates in Houston to have offensive and defensive rookie of the year this coming season. Yeah, and once again, the smoke we kept getting the last three weeks, the last two weeks, this can happen, that can happen. The smoke is cleared. And it's gone back to where we were in January, folks. The top two quarterbacks, however you like them, they came off the board first. The best defender in college football over the last three seasons comes off the board first. Smoke, Joel, fire for everyone else. It got tamped out quickly. We're right back to where we're supposed to be in this draft. All right, let's jump into Will Anderson in the video. Again, the, the, the elite character, elite work, work ethic, leadership, all that stuff's great. But when he gets on the field, this guy has got power and twerk and plays the game in a manner that you see Khalil Mack play football. Run and pass, he's a complete player. He can dominate at the point of attack. He's done it for three straight years. When you watch him get after the quarterback, he's got incredibly strong hands. Talk about having shock in your hands. He's able to get underneath, get underneath the wrist, pop it up and get home. He has a feel to go along with his suddenness. You overset, you get over your skis as a tackle. He feels it. He's going to counter underneath and get home with a sack. Think about the point of attack, stack and shed. That's Jamari Sawyer, who started a bunch of games for the Chargers last year. Keep in mind, he's playing against NFL players every week. And then you don't want to account for him on the backside. He's going to be able to close that door with his speed and his effort. With the fourth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Anthony Richardson, quarterback, Florida. So Anthony Richardson, who lit up the combine in Lucas Oil Stadium, who knew he was just leaving the light on for himself. He will be going back 
to Indianapolis, where he crushed the combine. And he is the quarterback of the moment. You could see the emotion pouring out of this young man from the University of Florida. He is the young quarterback chosen by the Indianapolis Colts. The fan base has been waiting to see a young quarterback come out of the draft room with the blue horseshoe on his head, and he is Anthony Richardson. Remember Bo Jackson ran out of the stadium? Anthony Richardson, after he clocked that 4-4-3, he just ran right into the locker room there in Indianapolis <laughs> and, and put his clothes in there knowing that's where he was going to be. All you got to do, guys, is pop in the tape against Utah. And you're like, oh, well, my evaluation's done. Let's take him. Played very well against Tennessee. He did. You know, I know everybody wants to point to the Kentucky game where he had a struggle. I know it's only been 13 starts. But, DJ, you've been analyzed this guy pretty well right from the word go. Yeah, body type-wise, he's Cam Newton. This is rare, rare, rare size-speed combination. It's a little bit of a roller coaster ride when you watch the tape. What you can't question is the pure arm talent, the arm strength. How about the urgency and the twitch within the pocket to be able to navigate around rushers against your ball CD? He's extremely sudden and explosive. This is the play of the year from a quarterback. A little jump, pump, fake, spin, and delivers a touchdown against Utah. Jalen Hurts, who you referenced, you want to run some power in between the tackles. He's 244 pounds, not a problem. And when you think about runners, you think about first downs with quarterbacks, not with Anthony Richardson. You think about touchdowns. It's not often you see QBs go 80 against LSU. This is going to be a fun offense to watch in Indy. With the fifth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Devin Witherspoon, quarterback, Illinois. All right, so they go defensive back. What do you think there, DJ? I absolutely love this football player, and I love this fit there in Seattle. I didn't think there was a snowball's chance they would do it. The last time they drafted a corner in the first round was Kelly Jennings in 2006. CD, they found corners later on, but this, this dude is a stud, man. I think Pete Carroll... He got sick of watching what the caliber of defense they were playing and said, I'm not waiting anymore. I love this kid. Remember, they were 28th in red zone defense last year. And you mentioned Pete Carroll finding his corners later. What round did they find Tariq Wollin last year in the UTSA? Fifth round. So now he's adding that combination on the back end of his defense because he felt like Daryl Taylor really blossomed as an edge rusher for them last year with nine and a half sacks. It also might tell us something about Jalen Carter, Joel Klatt, yep. because remember, we thought this was an ideal spot for him to go. It's a great point. This is where I thought we would start to talk about at least, like, is Jalen Carter a possibility? But with Devin Witherspoon, talking with his coach, Ryan Walters, who's now the head coach at Purdue, he was the defensive coordinator at Illinois, and he said that there's a unique trait about Devin Witherspoon, guys. When the pressure gets ratcheted up, his technique actually improves. The more trash he talks, his technique actually improves. That's a really rare trait, and I'm sure something that the hyper-competitive Pete Carroll loved about him. Remember, he went through the fire at Illinois, 155-pound guy walks into the locker room. People think he shouldn't be there. He had to prove himself at every moment, and now he's proven himself the number five overall pick in this draft. Small kid started three games as a true freshman, never looked back. Tell you what, let's get into the video here. We had Sauce up here a little earlier. Another guy who was around 150 pounds when he showed up on campus in college. So these guys play with a chip on their shoulder. He doesn't have that height, but this is one feisty, instinctive player who reminds me a lot of Denzel Ward. Check this out. Boom. That is the way he plays. His controller does not have a pause button on it. He sees it. He trusts it. He goes. The ability to run vertically, not a problem. He ran in the mid four fours. We didn't see him run at the combine. He nailed that time at his pro day. The ball skills, find it, play it, and finish. Pete Carroll says it's always about the ball. He knows how to go get it. And the feistiness the, as a tackler, it jumps off the screen. He doesn't He doesn't just drag guys down, get guys on the ground. He's out there to get after people. He is a fun, fun player. Pete Carroll's going to love him. You can see that. Detroit Lions have traded the sixth pick to the Arizona Cardinals. With the sixth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Paris Johnson Jr., Ohio State. So a pass protector for Kyler Murray when he comes back from injury. And it's Paris Johnson, the first offensive lineman off the board in this year's draft. And Monty Austin Ford had an opportunity here with his first selection to 
let everybody know where his priorities lie, and that is at the line of scrimmage. There are holes all over this roster. I can make the case this is probably the worst roster in the NFL right now. There's a lot of places they could have gone. I thought when they traded back to 12, Paris Johnson would be their target. And I think they looked at the landscape of some of these teams that might be O-line teams ahead of them and said, we're not taking that chance. Let's just go back up there and get our guy. They needed a suitor ahead of Chicago and Philadelphia, probably. You know, someone like that. Maybe the even, Raiders could maybe use a right the tackle Raiders, as well. They could use a right tackle, and they had to jump those teams to get up there. I think if they'd had to stick at three, he was going to be the target. Remember, Jonathan Gannon is a defensive coordinator in Philadelphia. He probably said to his GM, Monty Austin, for it, let's take care of Kyler Murray. I'll scheme some things up on the defensive side and try and keep us solvent until we're ready to go. I almost wonder when they went out there to see Kyler's statue unveiled in Oklahoma, if Kyler was like, hey, appreciate you coming. Cool statue. Who are we taking? An offensive lineman, right? <laughs> at, at that point, they put their arm around his shoulder and said, don't worry, young man, we got you. <laughs> what do you like about this kid, DJ? Well, you talk about somebody that's got unbelievable length and quickness and intelligence. The comparison for me was Andrew Thomas because I don't think he was an elite bender. I didn't think Andrew Thomas was an elite bender. Andrew Thomas has turned out to be a great professional football player. I think the same could be in his future. If he gets beat up on the high side of a rush, he's got that length to just wash them right up the field. In the run game, you see flashes of this where he will really finish. He can latch and drive you and remove you from the line. He finishes in space. Another great example here. Look at where he takes him. He's, that's like some blindside stuff with Michael Orr back Time in the Time for that young man to go home. Yes. And then he has experience nice. previously playing inside. I think he will be a day one tackle, but he has experience having played guard as well as on the outside. So, again, this was a priority move. Let's get the offensive line in better shape. And once Kyler comes back, let's give the guy a fighting chance. With the seventh pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Tyree Wilson, defensive end, Texas Tech. All right. So, I don't know if Patrick Mahomes is still back there, but he has a close-up look of somebody's coming to go hunt him with Max Crosby and Chandler Jones having Tyree Wilson added to that defensive line in Las Vegas. Yeah, and, and DJ, as you get started with all this, you mentioned about how they have to go hunt these people down. Rich just mentioned it. Max Crosby could not be happier right now. All that pressure he's added, he's needed that running mate Chandler Jones last year. This guy this year in a rotation is pretty strong. Yeah, Chandler Jones did not play as well as they had hoped when they yep. made that move. So if you're, if you're struggling to get to the quarterback, which they were, and you're not taking the football away, which they were, they decided front to back. That's how they're going to operate. Go get more pass rush, and maybe that'll help them take the ball away on the back end. There were some concerns with a, with a foot injury with Tyree that apparently has gone by the wayside. I will say I got to cover one of his games. He played at TCU this last year and obviously loved watching him on tape. But, CD, as you know, you get to those games, you can go down on the field. And I was like, I want to, I want to see Whoa, this guy. There we go. There we and go. That's, that's kind of what I saw as a guy that is just – he is central casting on the edge in the NFL. I have to ask you guys real quick. Every year, who is the chiropractor for the commissioner after this is over? <laughs> Tyree he, Wilson. Because he takes some hits he along the way right and there. he goes. And with Tyree Wilson going, he is this year's Trayvon Walker, DJ, because this is the traits aspect of it. Will Anderson's production doubled it in terms of sacks. Look at his comp on the bottom of the screen. It was Chandler Jones, there you who go. now is going to be his teammate. When you have 35 and 5 8 inch arms, that suit we just saw was not off the rack. I can promise you that. This guy uses that length. He attacks blocks. He plays aggressive. He wants to be always moving forward. He's going to be able to close the backside with his speed. You see the power, speed to power. And again, those long arms of his, he gets into the chest of a tackle and it's over. Again, watch him just collapse that inside long arm. He did not see a lot of great offensive tackles on his schedule this year. That's going to be an adjustment for him. With the eighth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Bijan Robinson, running it. back, Texas. The Falcons did it. The Atlanta Falcons had a highly talented, high character individual from Texas sitting on the draft board who just happens to play running back in a league that's all about passing and a quarterback driven league. 
a league in which somebody like Austin Eckler says, I'd like a new contract, and they say, go seek it. You scored a ton of touchdowns. Go seek it. And he's still in Los Angeles. A league in which we all know Derrick Henry might be sitting out there. Who the heck knows? But you've got B. John Robinson now, a top 10 drafted running back in the NFL, and he's going to Atlanta. Maybe this is a time we can officially rebrand this position for players like B. John Robinson. Heck, let's just call them offensive weapons. If we have somebody in Debo Samuel who majors as a wide receiver and minors in a running back, why can't we have a guy major as a running back and minor as a wide receiver? He's got that type of skill set, CD. You might want to get that trademark quickly. John Lynch used that with Kyle Juszczyk. Remember, he go. said, we're listing him as an offensive weapon. But when you are exceptional, when you are special, all these rules about not taking a guy go out the window. Dave Gettleman called a lot of grief in New York about taking Saquon Barkley at number two. Ask yourself this question. No Barkley last year of the Giants a playoff team. When you have that guy, you go get him and you put him in your lineup. And a draft full of exceptions where guys don't meet all the marks. This is a prototype player. I think he's the third best player in the entire draft class. So to get him at number eight, I think not only is exciting, it's great value. For a comp, you see that number five. Think back to Edger and James and those Colts teams. He's that type about of edge dynamic. about Edger Miami wearing five? Absolutely, that type of a dynamic playmaker. A lot of times you have to sacrifice. Either you get somebody who's explosive and tight, or he's loose and doesn't have a lot of juice. This guy is very explosive, but he's a real loose, fluid runner. It's a unique combination he has. The short area quickness, stop, start, no problem. He can stop on a dime. You want to make people miss, get it 104 times this year, more than any other running back in college football. The elusiveness, here's three missed tackles, just ho-hum. They can't get anywhere near him to get him on the ground. Another example in the passing game, we talked about that offensive weapon. You can do it out of the backfield. You can split him out like this. Watch the contact catch right there. Looks like a tight end working down the seam, a little wheel route. He can make you miss and make things happen after the catch. This is a special, special player. It's time for Next Gen Stats powered by AWS to see the overall top draft score. He's at the very top of the list. Again, this is a prototype at the running back position. And the Chicago Bears have traded the ninth pick to the Philadelphia Eagles. With the ninth pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Jalen Carter, defensive tackle, Georgia. So last year, the Eagles moved up a couple of spots to draft Jordan Davis from Georgia. And now tonight, moved up one spot and snagged Jalen Carter to reteam with Jordan Davis on the line in Philadelphia and end this Georgia Bulldogs night. Ninth overall, he is, in fact, a top 10 pick in this year's draft. And the Kobe Dean's going to be having flashbacks tonight when he goes to sleep. He's going to be like, wait a second. I've got these two guys in front of me again now as I'm starting at linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles. This is the most talented football player in this draft class. And I think if you pulled all 32 teams and just said what you see on the field, who has the most talent, it's this guy. And this is a team, as Rich said, CD, that was in the Super Bowl last year. This is because of the trade they made previously. Who gets to be a Super Bowl caliber team and add potentially the most talented football player in that next draft? And DJ Howie Roseman as a general manager has demonstrated he's willing to be a year ahead in terms of drafting. The Kobe Dean, he sat last year. He's going to start this year. He gets his triangle back in front of him. But remember, they brought back Fletcher Cox, who's been a cornerstone of their defense for a long time. Here is his eventual replacement. And last but not least, Jordan Davis. Stamina was the question we had coming out he played well early got hurt didn't play much later he's got to increase his stamina increase his rotations on the field can he come along with Jalen Carter and give them those two bookends inside for the next five to seven years I just want I just watched this guy play and I marvel at the, the explosiveness that he has on the interior he just sheds blocks so quickly and get to the quarterback he can produce from the interior now listen are there times when it's like, hey, does it, does it look like he wants to play here? Okay, yeah, there might be some effort. Issue, but when you pair him with college teammates that know him and know how to get his motor going, I think that's going to help Jalen Carter. And now all of a sudden, here's Philadelphia, and they got the two premier defensive tackles in the last two drafts. 
That's pretty That's pretty impressive. Yeah, no, he's talented. And I would even disagree with you on the play hard point, Joel, because when I watched him, I thought he chased plays. He had an ankle injury week one. He comes back with a knee injury later in the season. If anybody wanted to shut it down, he could have shut it down, and he was likely to be a top five pick if we didn't have things happen off the field. He went out there and played. I, I'll give the guy credit don't, for that. Don't CD. forget in the NFL, you won't be playing 95 snaps a game either. Not on that <laughs> D-line. Uh, you talk about the quickness, the leverage, and the power, and I don't say it lightly when I say Quinn and Williams, that's the type of player. Look at the knockback that he has here against Oregon. A little forearm shiver there to reset the line of scrimmage. The quickness, the suddenness. I, I wrote my note. This guy, like, teleports from one gap to another. I don't know how he got there, but he somehow gets there. Look at your ridiculous quickness. Cloud. Again, watch him stack shed and then make a tackle. Another example of the change of direction, quickness, quarterbacks trying to get away from him. Good luck. He is an outstanding finisher once he gets into the backfield. How about fullback? You think that they might have some fun? Nick Sirianni with this one. That's a three for. That's a three for one special with him at the fullback position. Options for With the 10th pick in is. the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Darnell Wright, offensive tackle, Tennessee. All right. Wow. So it is Darnell Wright who is not here tonight. This is the second offensive lineman off the board. Does that surprise you? A little bit, yeah. No, this is a very talented player, CD. This is your Tennessee Vol. We just saw Jalen Carter go. He saw a little bit of Jalen Carter and held up well, but it was what he did against Will Anderson. That's what really put him on the map this year. A totally different player last year than what we saw this year. He's on the right side this year. Again, against Anderson, there weren't a ton of one-on-one -on -one opportunities, but when he did have that one-on-one -on -one opportunity, he was fine. Here he is against Jalen Carter. We just saw go off the board did a great job against him he's 330 plus pounds he is physical he is strong here he is against greasy in the bowl game so his tape you want to see him go up against good players you see him go up against great players and he has that ability to knock you off the ball this this draft for the bears and this offseason has all been about justin fields and they just got a physical balling offensive tackle